Okay, so some tips when coloring. First off, know that color pencils, granted they feel like they're entirely made out of wood, but the color itself is actually a, like a low key plastic. When you're doing your coloring, if you're too aggressive too quickly in your rush to saturate it, and you press too hard right out the gate, well, you're essentially laying plastic down over your paper. And if you do that, well, that means you basically laminated the surface. So if you go in and you try to get some really nice blending, it could prove a little difficult because you've essentially put duct tape like over your paper first. So if you're struggling to blend your colors, know that you want to soften, lay back on the hand pressure as you near the blend between two colors, and then you build it up a little more gradually with each time you layer applying a bit more pressure. That way it won't be too much too quickly and threaten to have one color drown out the other and lose that seamless blend because a real gradual gradient is likely what you'll want nine times out of 10 so that you can't quite tell where one color stops and the other begins. Okay, and you'll also notice as I'm doing this, I'm going in from different angles, by which I mean, rather than just doing this, left to right, kind of diagonally, I'll go in top down diagonally. I could go in horizontally. I can go in vertically. By doing that, it's gonna be easy for me to fill in all those white gaps to saturate the page and to obliterate that view of the paper through my color pencil. Because to truly saturate it, I don't want any of the paper visible through my color pencil. Anything within my heraldry should be fully colored. In other words, there shouldn't be that sort of pockmarked, spotty um, view of that white paper, that sort of porous look through my colored areas. So now let's put it all together. If I want some gradients, uh, at least one gradient in every color, that's the transition from one color to the next, say yellow into orange or blue into a darker blue and I need things saturated. That means I need to layer a lot. I'll need to go over things with multiple passes. So to that end, why don't we start with our clown here? Now, I'm gonna choose my lightest color. I'm gonna layer that in first. Now remember, keeping it tight helps too. What I mean by that is, if you're coloring, that's very loose because you can see the gaps between each pencil stroke. Instead, keep your pencil strokes tighter so that you don't get gaps between them and it's going to be easier to get very rich, saturated, professional looking colors. What we wanna do is avoid simply filling in your line work the way we were pretty much used to doing it in grade school with crayons. Now we want to build up really rich, vibrant colors. And we also want to be in total control of them so that they can overlap, we can blend, we can get gradients. And that's why we want to start from light to dark. This is the lightest red I know that I'm going to use in this nose. I want to get pretty dark by the end. So I'm going to do a single pass with pretty low pressure in my hand, and then build up to the next. Now, because the light source is above it, it would stand to reason that the nose is actually gonna get a little deeper 
in color, a little darker on the underbelly of the nose because it's hard for light to get down there. I think a lot of people are too quick to just jump to shadows and interpret shadows as, oh, black, it's gray. It's gotta be super dark or black if I'm gonna put a shadow in. But in reality, usually it's just a darker version of that same color. The way like you look at your, the shadow cast underneath your nose by the natural canopy of your nose, all of a sudden it's just, well, it's your skin tone, just slightly darker from that shade that's cast. Now I'm gonna, again, choose a slightly darker red or just get a darker hue by pressing a little darker, pressing a little harder to get that darker look. Okay, so already we're getting a gradient. The transition from one color to the next, a sort of pinkish light red into a deeper apple red as we move down. Already it's far more interesting than if we just had a nose that was one solid color like this. This is already more interesting to look at because it's deeper, it's more vibrant, but it's got more variation. Your eye is attracted to contrast. Like all human eyes, we like variety. And that's why artists, professional artists, fill their compositions with color. You never get bored looking at it then. So now, if I did want to get darker still, I might reach for a deeper hue, say like a blue or a black and touch it very, very lightly because I don't want to get pure black, but if I want to darken my red, I could just put a little darkness into it like so. Like this is sort of like a dark gray. I'm not going to press hard. I don't want this to all of a sudden become replaced, right, by this color. I want it to blend in with it. So I want the red to do most of the legwork. I'm just gonna try to get a viewer's eyes to see a sort of darker red by just blending just gently a little bit of that darker value or that brown in there, and it's working. You can see it kind of emerge there. And then inside the nostril where it's hardest for the light to get, I'm gonna make it darkest of all. Mm -hmm. So I can always add more color. I can always add another layer, but of course it's harder to subtract. So I always wanna err on the side of like patience and building up belly because if I don't like a color I lay down, if I press too hard, if it gets too dark and I can't, you know, and I don't want it, trying to go in with an eraser is gonna be pretty tricky for some color pencils. Others, like you won't be able to get rid of them entirely, but you can fade them and then go in and replace them with new color, which is totally fine, okay? So uh, if I was then going to say, work on orange in the hair or green in the hat, or, no matter what color I'm choosing, every color needs a gradient and so should have some variety. Maybe I start off with a yellow in the hat and I ease into a green, right? Maybe the inside of the mouth is a deep pink and turns into almost purple as we get into the, the tonsils in the back of the throat there for a sense of depth. Um, so I wanna make certain that no matter what I choose, I'm always starting with the lightest like so. And then transitioning into something, maybe a darker version of that color, maybe an entire color an entirely different shift in color, like so. So already I'm gonna start. Getting it a little denser, because again, I wanna hide that porous texture. I do not want to see the paper through there. And my gradient, aside from being a requirement, should be used as a tool. Don't think about it in terms of like, oh, I gotta do this just because I've been told I need to. Now think about how you use it. If I need to have a gradient in all colors, 
Well, I'm gonna need to get gradually darker as I get to the back of the throat for that sense of depth so it looks like a cavern. So you can already see that gradient shift. Okay, and again, I'm starting lightly and I'm gradually applying more and more pressure with my hand as I build it up so I don't go too far too quickly making mistakes I can't undo. Okay, a little darker underneath the canopy of the teeth there. And then as we get really far back, maybe I get into a near plum. Right? I want everything to have that kind of variety, which can seem like a drag at first, but the more you explore, the more colors that have gradients, the deeper the saturation is, the less you see the page, the more your image is gonna pop from the paper in a way it perhaps never has before. Right? So even something fairly white, like say the teeth, well, that's not gonna be empty paper. I'll consider where I need to suggest dimension. So maybe a little gray, a little light gray will help that. Darkest towards the bottom perhaps, or where their gaps between the teeth are most pronounced. Everything, even something that's white needs to have a gradient, it needs to have a variety, it cannot be empty paper. And I'm even gonna put a little yellow in my teeth for my clown. He could have done a better job flossing in his youth. I'm gonna make that obvious. Mm -hmm. Let's give him some gums. Now you'll notice I kept the pencil really light to begin with because if it's too dark, it'll muddy the colors. The more graphite you have on the page, the more likely all that extra debris from your pencil is gonna get pulled into say watercolor or color pencils or markers, especially like alcohol-based markers or watercolor, something that's wet that can Remoisten and pull that dirt basically into your colors. And when you think you're going to get a yellow, you're going to get a olive green or a near black. So you want to make certain that you start off light. And that might even mean tracing a really dark sketch you've made if you're happy with it. Just tracing the final draft onto a second sheet of paper where it's very light so that you won't have that issue. Now notice I'm even getting some depth in the gums by adding a little variety of color there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll help define the teeth. I want to avoid using black though. I think a lot of people reach for black too quickly, but contrast is what separates objects, like say the teeth from the back of the mouth. And I can get that separation just with a little extra color, a little more contrast between them, pressing a little harder, showing the difference between, say, the bottom of the teeth and the hue in the mouth. All right, same thing. I used sort of yellow and grays in my teeth, so maybe I'll use just a light gray to outline the front few teeth right there. But I want to avoid black because it's so overused that oftentimes, without realizing it, people, before they know it, are staring at this web, the spider web of all these black outlines, which kind of dilutes the color, it draws the eye, it's kind of, uh, it looks a little too clumsy and messy when you have so much high contrast everywhere, then nothing has contrast. So your colors actually pop more if you don't have so much black competing with them. 
So try not to overdo it so much and think about what else you might put in there. I definitely want this character to have some yellowed eyes. And I'm also gonna keep just this little spot untouched because I want a sort of highlight, a white reflection there. As if caught, as if catching the light from above the same way the nose does. Then we'll get a little more yellow. Again, I'm always building up just gradually a little more pressure, even if it's something as light as yellow. Then I'll apply another layer of the same color, just a little more pressure. And I think I'm also going to go in with a little, just a hint of orange. Try to make that eye pop just a little more. Oh yeah, that went a long way. And I'm going to try to keep it light if I've got a really pronounced orange. Maybe I only have one orange in my uh, collection of colors. I can still get a nice yellow orange without getting too intense. I just keep the pressure light in my hand. Okay. Then let's go in. I'm going to even have a gradient in this iris or pupil. I'm going to start with a light blue. I'm going to end with a darker one. And all of a sudden, elements are starting to jump out. And I would argue that specifically because we are taking pains to layer, we're not rushing, and we're putting a lot of color variation into it. If that eye was just yellow, it would fall flat. All right? So let's get some... Uh, yellow in that hair, like a light orange. I'm always tempted to reach for green and give a clown a sort of crusty the clown hair, a la Simpsons. Mm -hmm. Let's see, you know what, I'm gonna get a little darker with this. Then let's go in. And because the light is coming from above, the bottom half of the hair will be the part that gets a little darker. Kind of creates a natural canopy again from that light source. Okay, and I'm gonna reach for even a little red, I think, sort of like an orange red. Push that darkness. There we go. And to help the tongue stand out from the mouth, we're gonna need to make certain it doesn't get lost in the background, which means let's get a really light pink here. We'll have to avoid those darker purples or they'll just blend one into the next. In fact, maybe I need a different kind of pink. Getting a little darker on the underbelly of that tongue. Almost give it a width there. And again, I can see a lot of that paper's porous texture in it, so I'm gonna revisit. And then to help separate from the background a little more, let's get a little darker at the very bottom. And I'll outline it again, not with black, but with a sort of darker version of the color I chose in here. So in this case, sort of like a really deep pink or, well, purple. Mm -hmm. This is coming together. I'm kind of liking this now. Um, I've got a birthday hat up here, a clown hat, sort of color in place. I've got some teeth on the bottom here. So let's get some of that, those yellow stains back in. Just 
seeing those makes me want to revisit these, make them a little more yellow. All right. Let's get some gray in there. All right. Okay, then when I can, like I said, I'm going to try to avoid using too much black. So I'm just going to outline a lot of his features with this light brown. Let's go with the classic red. We'll need some kind of smeared makeup around his mouth and lips here. As usual, I'm going to try to find some opportunities to make it a little darker, help it stand out. There we go. Now, only at the very end do you want to ask yourself where dark could go because where that, or sorry, where black could go because that is ultimately, of course, the darkest color. And since you want to work from light to dark to ensure that you can keep blending, you can make changes, you can build your colors up, it's the last thing you want to add anywhere. So if I decided, yep, I definitely want to go in with a really dark, say, blue or a black. Again, the, the last layers, I'm going to look where I might need them, like say in the pupil, the eye, maybe the furthest black, furthest back part of the throat right here to add some additional contrast, help that tongue leap out, and it worked. Maybe the inside of this ear just a little bit. And maybe some will get a slight outline. Maybe they need a little darker treatment. Like these teeth. That's totally fine. We just want to be very mindful of where we're putting those extremely dark colors to ensure that we do not overuse them and then hide so many of our details or draw the eye away from all the vibrant colors that we want to get down first. All right. Hope you found this helpful. And as always, if you need any help, don't hesitate. Reach out in emails, ask questions during class. Remember, we've got some examples found in the classroom. Assignment requirements can be found in the slide and the project summary. But take your time, build it up, include both gradients and saturation to ensure that you don't see paper underneath your drawing. Your image pops, and we truly elevate it from the days of grade school where things were simply filled in to a high quality level high school art where we are mindful not only of the colors we choose but how we apply them and how they are seen when you step back to admire that piece at the very end all right best of luck